Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to another lecture of geotechnical engineering 1 today is week 8 and we will be discussing lecture number 15 which is about soil particle shape so let's begin So what is the importance of soil particle shape? Soil particles as you may have observed in nature are present in a soil mass in different shapes. Sometimes they are edgy like you can see over here in aggregate and sometimes they are more rounder which you can see over here from a river bed aggregate. So this aggregate is from the crush plant. In this aggregate is from river now the particle size is more or less same in both cases but if we look at the physical properties of both aggregates then there will be huge difference in terms of the shear stress resistance and in terms of the compaction and wide ratio of both so that is why the shape of the particle has greater influence on the physical properties of a given soil and these physical properties are the resistance to shear force which you can see over here is a demonstration of a shear force and also it results in a different types of a settlement or wide ratio porosity and further if we uh, see then uh, permeability as well so because these the shape of the particles is very very important not much attention is usually paid to the particle shape usually we consider the soil to be a continuum medium so we do not consider the each particle separately and then analyze it so which is known as continuum mechanics problem so we just determine the property of overall material and consider that as a continuous medium uh, just like a continuous surface like a steel or uh, any other material uh, however while the soil is very different because its properties are primarily dependent on the particle shape not only the size in this case the size of the particle may be more or less same in both cases but their physical properties will be the difference so in this case if the origin is same the particle size is same the only reason that the particle the soil property will be different in these two soils will be because of the particle shape but because it is difficult to measure especially for the microscopic or sub microscopic soils like silts and clays so that is why it is not given much attention it is not receiving the enough attention uh, so we will discuss uh, in the next slides that how the particle shape influence uh, the physical properties and how you can quantify determine the shape of a given particle and if given particle has a specific type of a shape how it's going to behave and in which class you will have to basically put it now as we discussed in your previous lectures you know that the gravels are 4.75 millimeter and larger size particles and then the sands are greater than 75 micron so over here you can see in both cases because the particle sizes are larger they can be observed with naked eye and they can be measured as well with the conventional techniques in the laboratory uh, very easily while on other hand coming to the fine grained soil like silts or clays they can be only observed under a microscope or in case of a clay using scanning electron microscope so in both cases you can see the image taken from silt which you can see over here the silt particles and in this image you can see the clay particles which are flaky in shape flake is just like your cornflakes so they are plate light like structure so 
plates being put on the top of each other which you can see over here so the scale over here you can see six micrometer so six micron is this much so this particle is more or less like six micron size in the length while the thickness is much more less th than that so this is the main challenge because uh, their shape cannot be determined easily so that is why we usually consider the overall property of the material and we do not uh, usually go into the detail of determining the properties of uh, material uh, provided to us based on the shape so <clears throat> moving on so what are the sh particle shapes they are divided into three major categories bulky particles which you can see in this image okay they are bulky they are larger in shape size over here and they are more rounder which you can see over here uh, also the uh, sand grains they are also considered as bulky particles we'll discuss in a while uh, what is the bulky particle and how we can differentiate then you have flaky particles this is the example of a flaky particles which is uh, image of a clay which we just observed on the previous slide as well taken from a scanning electron microscope so they are flaky in shape just like your cornflakes uh, they are like a plate like structure like leaves put on the top of each other if you observe them at a microscopic level obviously with the naked eye you will not be able to see the clay particles if you pick it up and the third type of shape is needle shape aggregate which you can see over here in this image now this is also clay uh, this particular image is from atabolgite clay uh, if you look at those clays under microscope instead of flaky they will have needle shape particles so they are they are a lot of needles over here and they make up this uh, particular type of clays so they are needle shape aggregates in which their only length is greater in this case there are three dimensions two dimensional and a single dimensional particle so let's discuss that into a further detail now discussing the bulking bulky particles now bulky particles as the name suggests they are bulky they are larger in size okay just like uh, the aggregate grains over here or the sand grains if you take uh, they will be considered as bulky particles because they relatively in comparison to the clay and silt which are very very small particles they are bigger particles they may be smaller but we are talking in relation with silts and clays so in this case soil grains which have all the dimension more or less considerably comparable to each other here you can see there is a length of this particle there is a width of this particle there is thickness of this particle so there is considerable amount of thickness length width although this is not perfectly square or circular particle but over here you can see the all dimensions are measurable over here and they are comparable to each other so this aggregate is not like a plate shape it is more like a round ball you can imagine or uh, any other three dimensional deformed shape over here uh, so they are usually called bulky grains if their all dimensions are considerable and comparable uh, with each other close to each other bulky particles are basically found by physical disintegration of a parent rock so this is result of the mechanical uh, uh, weathering which we discussed in the very first lectures so they are a fragmentation of a rock uh, whether they are uh, fragmented by the natural processes which we discussed pre previously or if they may be sometime result of uh, um, uh, artificial uh, weathering in a crush plant as well by taking a big rock and crushing it into a chunks of pieces which you can see over here so they are usually found by me mechanical uh, uh, disintegration by physically degrading and crushing a rock into these particles 
so they are usually called bulky particles so their origin is from mechanical uh, degradation or disintegration so now vertical pa bulky particles are uh, usually form, uh, found in various shapes <coughs> Uh, near the origin they will be more edgy in shape but uh, further down the stream if they are being transported by the water in the lower laying area they will be more rounder okay so there are four uh, types in which they are divided by the geologists which includes the angular aggregates which you can see over here the edges are very sharp and angular over here you can see over here this is aggregate from a crushed plant uh, then they may be subangular as well. Over here, you can see they are angulars, but the edges are more rounder. You can see over here. So the edges are not sharp like this aggregate, but they are more rounder. So they can be called subangular aggregates. Then you can have subrounded, which is like uh, more rounded than subangular, but less rounded than a rounded aggregate over here. So this is the subrounded aggregate shape. It, there may be different shape but this is just a typical shape which we are showing over here just to demonstrate it so this is a subrounded aggregate in the, this picture you can see it and then you can have a rounded aggregate which is more or less round in shape so it will not be completely round like a circle but you can see over here compared to this angular aggregate this is more rounded this type of aggregate is usually present at um, where uh, you are crushing the aggregate at crush plant uh, while these types of aggregates are usually uh, due to the transportation process of the aggregate. While it is being disintegrated uh, from a parent rock at higher elevations and then trans being transported by the water downstream. So during this transportation, it will be rolling across the ground, it will be surface will be weathered, etc. And due to this rolling, continuous rolling process over millions or billions of years sometimes, uh, it becomes rounded so their surfaces are more rounded because of the rolling action uh, due to which they are transported from higher laying area where they are disintegrated from the rock and then taken by the river into lower laying area and that's why you all the time you may have observed that if you look at the aggregate in the river nala bed then they'll be more rounded but if you take aggregate from a crush plant they'll be more like angular or edgy which you can see over here Okay, so this is because of the transportation process in which they have been uh, removed from the parent rock and then being transported and if the more they are transported the, over the more length, the more they will be rounded. So that is why when you see aggregates in the river beds, etc., they are more rounded compared to the aggregates which you get from the crush plant where you are uh, just uh, crushing the fresh rock. The next is flaky aggregate or flaky particles. Now these particles are extremely thin <coughs> in one direction and then it have, has a considerable dimension in other two. Like length and width, you can see there's a considerable dimension but thickness is very very small. <coughs> so they are just like plate or leaf which you can see in this image. So this image is from clay. So here you can see this is a clay soil. You cannot visually see these plates over here. But if you take it and take an image through scanning electron microscope, like this is 20 micrometer resolution over here. So this, this much is 20 micrometer. So over here you can see, then you can, uh, under the microscope, then you can see the size of this clay. So usually clay aggregates, which is result of chemical weathering, are flaky in shape. Okay, they are usually submicroscopic particles or sometimes microscopic as well. Uh, in that range, but commonly they are submicroscopic because they are very very small, <coughs> uh, even smaller than silt. They possess a very poor shear strength because of their platy shape. Uh, they can be easily uh, compressed. They also have a lot of affinity towards settlement as well. They possess very poor shear strength as well. Uh, and they have got less permeability because of this platy shape as well because uh, water cannot easily penetrate uh, because this wide ratio is very very less so <clears throat> flaky particles are clay particles and they are result of the chemical weathering they are submicroscopic they possess very poor shear strength they are susceptible to 
settlement, uh, primarily the consolidation settlement, and they are platy in shape, in which the two dimensions are considerable and the third dimension is very, very less. So, they are just like a plate or leaf shape aggregate, and they are commonly clay particles. Then, the last one is the needle shaped particles. Now, in this case, the two dimensions are negligible, only one dimension is considerable. So, the width and thickness, they are very, very less, but the length of the particle over here is considerable. Just like you can see over here in the image, or this, this is an image of atabolgite clay. This is atabolgite clay, uh, not very common in uh, our part of the Pakistan, but this is a very light whitish color of uh, clay, which you can see in this image. Uh, so, atabolgite clays are needle shaped. If you look uh, uh, at this clay under the microscope, also there are some marine and coral deposits uh, in the marine area, in the, in the sea. They also have such kind of particle shapes as well. Okay, so they are more uh, like needles over here. Although these clays are not very common, uh, in some regions we have it, but uh, not in the Peshawar region. Uh, but you can identify it from this distinctive light whitish kind of color that will basically tell you that it is a tabulgite clay but to be sure you will have to put it under scanning electron microscope and there you will be able to observe this needle shape instead of the flaky shape which the common clays are like this okay they are not needle shape they are like flat type aggregate you can see this just plate like but in case of a tabulgite clays they will be like needles which you can see over here okay under the microscope now for the particles which are visible under the naked eye like gravels you can determine its flakiness and elongation okay you can determine that if a property a particle is elongated particle or if it is flaky particle elongation is if one dimension is large compared to other two dimensions while flakiness is if two dimensions is large in compared to another. So this is like plate shape and this is more like a needle shape. So you can determine that if your aggregate, uh, bulky aggregate is like more flaky or elongated. Using this uh, thickness gauge and length gauge, you can use them and we will be determining this flakiness and elongation of aggregates uh, in the laboratory as well. This experiment is in, uh, included in your laboratory course. So we will perform this test in the laboratory and you will determine the flakiness or elongation of the aggregate as well. So for the aggregate, we can do this using these gauges, flakiness and elongation gauges. So we can use them to determine the flakiness and elongation of the particle. While for the rest or from the, for the visible particle or for the particle which are not visible and you can determine their shape or their parameters under the microscope, uh, there are some other shape parameters as well which can tell you about uh, the shape of the particle. So first is angularity of the particle. So what is angularity? Angularity basically tells you if your particle is an angular or a rounded aggregate. Okay. So in this case, this is an angular aggregate, which you can see over here. So what is angularity? Angularity is average radius of the corners and edges divided by the radius of maximum inscribed sphere. So this is maximum inscribed sphere. Okay. Inscribed sphere is which uh, is drawn inside the shape. Okay, so you can see the edges of the circle is touching only on inside, and they are not touching on the outside. Okay, so this is called inscribed circle or inscribed sphere. So this is inscribed sphere. So if your uh, uh, this radius of this sphere, this is determined over here, you can see over this is the radius of this sphere. And average radius of the corners and edges. So over here you can see from the center, this is the radius of this corner, radius of this corner, radius of this corner. So all these radiuses, which you can see over here, uh, radius of this corner, then radius of this corner is here, and radius of this corner is like this and this. So if you take all these radiuses over here, like in this case, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 radiuses and divide it, add them together and divide by 6 over here. That will be the average radius. So you will put average radius over here 
and radius of this inscribed sphere over here. So if you solve it, that will basically give you the angularity. Now, if angularity is equal to 1, it will mean round particle. Because if you have got a round particle, then inscribed circle in the average radius will be more or less same. Okay. So in that case, your average radius of the corner for a circular shape and radius of maximum inscribed sphere, they will be same. Okay. So in that case, this value will be equal to 1. So if the value is equal to 1, then your particle will be a more rounder particle. But if the value of angularity is greater than 1, so the more is the value of uh, angularity, the more the particle will be angular particle like this. Okay, It will have a lot of edges and corners like this. It will not be spherical but more like an edgy or more like an angular shape which you can see over here. So if angularity is greater than 1, it will be basically uh, uh, edgy or angular shape particle. If it is close to 1 or if it is equal to 1, it will mean that it is a round particle. So you can determine if the particle is round or edgy or like angular as well. Then the next parameter is sphericity. Okay, that if the particle is sphere or not. So sphericity is equal to dE divided by LP. While d is the equivalent diameter of the particle and lp is the length of the particle or the largest dimension of the particle. Okay, So you, over here you have an aggregate, a bulky aggregate. So we've got three dimension, thickness, width and length. So the largest dimension will be basically your length and that will be your le over here. Now what is the de? You know the volume of the sphere is equal to pi d cube divided by 6. So if you solve that equation for d, you will get this equation. Okay, If it is pi d cube divided by 6, so if you transfer 6 to the other side and pi as well and then take, uh, because it's uh, uh, d cube, so over here you will have to basically take a right raised to power 3 over here. So from this equation, you can determine the equivalent diameter of the particle. Okay. So once you have equivalent diameter and length of the particle over here, you divide diameter divided by length of the particle, that will basically give you the sphericity of the particle. Okay. So if your particle sphericity is equal to 1, okay, it means that diameter and length are same. Over here, if it is like a sphere, then its length and diameter, they will be same for the sphere. So sphericity will be close to 1 or equal to 1 for a perfect spherical particle okay you try to imagine a sphere over here not a circle the difference between circle uh, sphere uh, in a circle is just like a difference between lid of any uh, utensil and a ball okay so the lid is a two dimensional shape uh, or like a plate okay or you can imagine plate as well plate is a two dimensional so if you look at that, it will be also circular. But if you look at the ball, that will be also circular. So, but the ball is spherical and the plate is platy or flaky. So in this case, if the sphericity is close to one, it means it's a spherical particles. It's like a ball. Okay. And if the sphericity is less than one, or close to 0 0.01 then the particle will be a flaky particle which will be like a plate light shape like this one okay so this is like a spherical particle in which you, there is considerable dimensions over here in terms of thickness width and length so it's more or less a spherical particle but this particle is flaky particle and its sphericity will be very very less okay like 0 0.01 if the sphericity is very very low like 0 0.01 you will say that it's a flaky particle but if the sphericity is uh, close to 1 or equal to 1 it will be more like a rounded or a ball shaped particle so sphericity also very very important parameter with which you can determine the particle shape so <clears throat> that is enough for particle shapes in next class we will be discussing about uh, the Atterberg limits and their use for the soil index properties for the clay soil we will discuss how the water uh, affects the properties of a clay soil 
uh, and how the clay can exist under different conditions, under different shear strength resistance with increasing or decreasing the moisture content of the clay. So that will be the, our topic in the next class. So see you soon. Take care. Thank you very much for listening.